Well, how do there, chums? It's I, Captain of the Steves, and today, chums, it's a cup of tea with Captain Steve, but you, as you know, it's empty. Yes, I've finished my tea. I've tried making this video a couple of times, and what I'm going to have to do is do some overlaying, do some editing pre-post. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> this is probably my fourth attempt. So here we go. I'm inside of game, and what I'm hoping to do is to bring to you guys some ideas that I've got going around my head as to what might be in the next update. So, as we've done the expedition, we've unlocked this guy that now appears inside of the Nexus, even inside of our legacy saves. So they're here for good. When you go over to see this assembled construct, mine is saying this. Here shall seize the crimson. Crimson true. Crimson false. Question mark. Undetermined. Okay. Interesting stuff. So if I run on down to the appearance modifier, we got the choice of getting two heads. Now, I did choose the Crimson Head as my first choice. I ran the expedition again, and I got the Atlantid Head as a second choice. But I'm wondering whether there's more to this choice than we meets the eye. I mean, at the moment, it's seeing me as being Crimson. I'm going to put the Atlantid Head on in a moment, and we're going to go up, and we're going to see if that makes any difference at all, people. And yeah, although I've tried to make this video a few times, I haven't actually tested that bit, so it's going to be interesting for me as well. Now, over here is this sign that's got two arrows here. So it almost feels like two separate different cues are going to be formulated right here. There's two banners, a blue banner and a red banner. Now, when I interacted with the actual construct up there earlier, it puts up some red text for the crimson. And the crimson is for the atlas. And that one has got sort of like a triangular sort of logo on it that could be an atlas type logo in a roundabout way. Whereas the blue one could be more inclined to be maybe the Atlantid. You know, blue for Atlantis and Atlantid. You know, I know that it's purple, yeah, because I know people are going to point that out to me, but I'm thinking of blue and red teams, even though it's purple and red, essentially. But I'm wondering whether we're going to get two different constructy robots standing here. You know what? I need to get myself a screenshot of this for making my sort of um, mock-up, because I'm going to be putting up mock-ups after I finish doing all of this sort of stuff. So let me just grab a little screenshot of that. Chicka boom. And uh, yeah, that's just saved onto my, my um, PlayStation for now, I guess. Anyways, if I run on over to the appearance modifier, let's go and put on, on the Atlantid construct head for a second, people. So if I go to head, can I just put it straight on now? Yes, Crimson, that's not the one I want. I'm going to try Atlantid Head first. Let's just put on the head, because that's the only thing I think denotes whether we're Atlantid or whatever. Right, so I need to get a nice little screenshot of, of, of me with the Atlantid Head on. But it would have been nice if I changed it to blue, um, because now I'm all red. I'll go do that in a moment. I'll do that in my own time, people. But anyway, let's go and see if this con construct up here changes what it says. Now I'm wearing the Atlantid Head. I don't think it will, but it's worth a try, isn't it? So where I'm going with this, people, is I'm wondering whether we might be getting things inside of the verse. What the fudge is that that's above him? I didn't notice that before. Has that always blinking been there? Can I stand on that? What the fudge is... Where did that come from? And what is it exactly? It looks like a hatch or something. It's like an armature that comes out. What the... What the devil's going on there? Okay, anyway, let's just talk to him. Hello there, mate. I can't stand on it. Hello. Shell accepted. Others accept fake shell. Undetermined. It has changed. It hasn't put the purple text in there. Here is accepted. Other accept fake shell. Undetermined. Ah, here we go. Other accepted Atlantid here shell. Accept Atlantid. Undetermined. It does change what he bloody says, mate. It does. But you can see there, it's now purple text. All right, OK, well, we're going to run down and we're going to go and stick on on the other head and come back up the stairs and see what he has to say, people. Oh, this is... this is. Oh, I didn't think it would do anything, but it actually does. So I'm wondering whether this is going to tie into factional choices. I think we're going to get factions or guilds or something along those lines coming into game, people. Let's just go and stick on the crimson head. Let's see what he says now. OK. <laughs> well, this is a turn up for the books. It really is. All right, well, let's leg on up over here then. And let's go see what he says this time, people. 
Hmm. So this was just a working theory, but I think there might be some substance to it. Let's see if he recognizes me now as having a redhead. Here shall does not see lost others. Now only crimson. Are you going to say the same thing again? I think you are. Here shell accepts other shells. Biggest other shell is safe. Hmm. I don't... I, what the fudge? But it's all red now. It's all red, isn't it? And it's gone back to saying what it was saying before, people. So I honestly think that that desk that we was looking at earlier, I think we're going to get two constructs standing there. Two of these robotic sort of entities standing at that desk. In fact, I'll do a mock-up, which I would have done in my own time, like I said I was going to do. In fact, I'm going down to the appearance modifier to do exactly that. But basically, I think we're going to have one with the Atlantean head, the head that I'm wearing, uh, well... One with the Atlantean head standing there, the mushroomy type one, and one with this one standing over this side. But I do the mock-up so you can actually freaking see what's inside my head, what I think is going to happen. And I think coming down here, we're going to get given guild missions. Yeah, and I don't know how they're going to be structured. I'm thinking perhaps in the roundabout way of maybe some sort of seasonal expedition missions that we can run from here, but they're actually triggered from here rather than doing expeditions from the main screen. There might be expeditions from the main screen, I don't know. But there's been quite a lot of sort of squiffiness to do with multiplayer for a long time, and now we seem to have to have each other's friends codes. So if I want to play online with somebody in keep stable the best way to do it is go into the networking options here go we go so you go into here friends list and then you can show your code which is that one there if you want to add me please do i don't mind and then you go to add friends code and you key in other people's codes and then you end up with your friends list over here you can see i've got like six pages of people added on my friends list and then they can join your game um and i think that's the way that we're going to have to build our guilds, is from that list. I'm wondering whether they've overhauled multiplayer in a roundabout way, or partly done it. And that's why we're seeing all these disconnects, and we're seeing all the sorts of problems going on inside of the verse. And perhaps that's why it hasn't been overly fixed, because maybe this update that we're going to get is going to be a massive full-on overhaul to the way that we run missions, how we go about doing missions, how we actually form our fire teams. Because at the moment, if you do want to run a mission, a lot of the times when you go over to this missions cube, there's people hold, look, there's three or four right there right now. So they sort of just hold it and wait for it. So if you wanted to do that one now, you'd have to do it with a squadron you, or wait until they're not there anymore or turn off your multiplayer. It almost makes multiplayer seem redundant. We used to be able to run missions from our freighters and I'm wondering whether they're going to bring in an element of that. You know, like how you have the construct up there. I'm wondering whether we might get a construct at our base or something. But I'm wondering where we might even be given new missions from the construct up here as well, like singular player missions. And then if you do want to run the guild ones, you go down to that desk. And I'm wondering whether there's going to be a complete overhaul to the way that we run missions. I mean, this this is too much of a nice model for them to just throw away. I mean, look at it. It looks freaking awesome. If it doesn't do more than it does now and just decide what head you're wearing, it's a bit freaking pointless. There's got to be something this thing does. I'm wondering whether we bring our rewards to this. You know, when we run missions from that desk down at the bottom with the two different constructs, I'm wondering if we come up here with whatever we bring up to this, maybe some encrypted boxes or something, this guy perhaps decrypts them. I mean, there's all different screens and all sorts of shizzle going on here. That would kind of make sense, wouldn't it? You know, like how you used to have to, inside of Destiny, you get these encrypted engrams and you take them to a decryptor and they decrypt them and then you get a reward. I'm wondering whether something like that's going to happen. And, you know, we might get some sort of new custom frigate or you might get a new multi-tool or maybe even a gal galactic chart map to go to a, an area of space that we've never been to before. I don't know. But hopefully he's going to be giving out stuff. I mean, he does use those holographic emotes quite a freaking lot, to be fair. So that's my thoughts and feelings on all of this. Do you think there's any weight to it? Do you think that is savvy speculation based on things that are in-game? 
you know, I don't want to just throw ideas out there without having something to go by in-game. Now I'm thinking other expeditions, such as Emergence with the worm babbers that appeared on planets. I was like, well, these are too nice to just throw away. They've got great animations, they're awesome to have. Why aren't they on infested planets? And a few weeks later, after the expedition ended, we got an update that did add those worm babies into game. So that was decent speculation. So I'm thinking, based on that sort of stuff and those sort of patterns, that perhaps this sort of line of thinking that I've got might actually come to fruition people inside the view of us. So at last, maybe that desk might spring to life. I've done I've done loads of speculations on that, that desk down there with the two sort of boards above it in the past, saying we might get guilds or we might get factions. That's been there for freaking time, hasn't it? It's been like that for a, well, since the Nexus came into fruition or until we got the NPCs added in, because a lot of these NPCs just sort of appeared here, didn't they? But yeah, these two lines over here, and these two boards over there I honestly think it's going to lead to something I think we're going to end up with two constructs there and they're going to give us the missions once we do the missions I think we're going to get encrypted things that we take up to that construct and it decrypts them and you've got random chance drops on loot so it promotes people running missions over and over to see if they can get some really cool stuff unlocked that's what I'm thinking people does that carry weight? Do you think it's good speculation? I need to go get myself a new cup of tea. And until next time, people, you've been awesome. Take care. Goodbye, goodbye. And goodbye again.